Ready? Three, two, one, go. Hello, hello. This is Ignacy Tsevichek, Portal Games. And this is the pod father of gaming, Stephen Bonacore. You are listening to Board Games Insider, episode 240. And we're recording this for you on June 29th, 2022. Board Games Insider is a proud member of the Dice Tower Network. And Ignacy, you and the Podfather get to spend some really wonderful quality time together next week at Dice Tower East, involving meals, eating cookies, entertaining our fans at the Board Games Insider meetup on Saturday at noon at the con, and above all, doing tag team mocking of Tom Vassell. I could not think of a better week. Don't you agree? I agree. Uh, I always complain on traveling, and I will continue to complain on traveling, but I'm really, really looking forward to meet you and all other industry friends and our fans. It's been eight years uh, since the last time I was at the many, Dice Tower Con. Many, and many years. Amazing convention. Mm-hmm. Always it was very good for me. I had only good memories from this convention, so looking forward. And yeah, Portal, uh, Portal Games is the premier sponsor. It's really nice that you're doing that for the convention. That's just great. And VIPs are getting free copies of Vienna Connection. I saw that. I'm going to the VIP dinner. <laughs> Somehow I was invited. Who knows how that happened? Uh, so uh, you, obviously you'll you'll be there. Uh, that's going to be fun. So uh, yeah, I can't wait. It's just going to be great. But in the meantime, we still have to we have podcasting business. What's happening over at Portal Games? At Portal Games, our team is preparing to start pre-orders for Brazil. When you are listening to this podcast, they are already started. Brazil is our Gen Con release. We mentioned this in a couple of podcasts already. Air shipped from China, especially for you, especially for Gen Con. And we will have uh, 120 copies for pre-order for you guys. So uh, don't uh, wait. Just pre-order. The game is a 4X Euro-style game. Reminds a little bit of the side. You are uh, gaining resources from the different the lands, you're building factories, you're building uh, n- different uh, n- towns and villages and uh, getting resources, and then you're bringing some armies and you're attacking other players. So there's a lot of uh, Euro-style systems, uh, like management of resources, and then there's a combat and uh, attacking other players. So a beautiful, amazing mix uh, designed by the Brazilian designer. It was originally published by the Brazilian publisher. They were on the Kickstarter. It was a very successful Kickstarter for them. And then we picked the rights for America. We are the publisher of this game in America, for the North America. And we are very proud. So this is what we are bringing for, for Gen Con. Check out portalgames.com. Portalgamesus.com. Learn about the pre-orders. Learn about this game. It looks stunning on the table. The, the artwork, the visualization, the components, everything is top class as you can imagine, because it was a Kickstarter and we are bringing the retail version that is still absolutely mind-blowing. That's awesome. For my, for my brag of the week, uh, already mentioned by Steven, I want to brag that I'm main sponsor of the Dice Tower Con. It's a pleasure. It was uh, all prepared, of course, by our former uh, director of operation, Lugot Finoski. He did it, uh, of course, with my full approval. Uh, so now I will be in this uh, VIP dinner, not him, <laughs> but, <laughs> but basically I'm very, I'm very proud, very happy. As I mentioned, the Dice Tower Con is one of these cons that made a difference for me, made a difference for my company and made a, a lot of very good things for me. I was demoing their detective for the first time and it was a huge success back then. I was there presenting Cry Havoc back then at the Dice Tower Con and then the game exploded. So I have only good memories of the Dice Tower Con and I'm very proud to be a sponsor of this convention. So all of you who are at the convention, I love you. I wish you amazing time. I wish you great time at this convention. And I hope that you will visit our booth, uh, Portal Games booth, and we will also have a room, dedicated room, where you can play our games and you will interact with me and my crew and my team and uh, see some new titles that we are bringing to the Dice Tower Con. For pre-orders and three days, along with the Brazil for the Gen Con, you can still <coughs> order and secure your copies of Gutenberg and Batman Everybody Lines. You can grab the whole bundle uh, for Gen Con if you want, so you can get all the three boxes for the Gen Con to pick up uh, at our booth or you can go to your local game store. I strongly recommend to check out your local game stores, go there, ask them for Gutenberg, ask them for the Batman Everybody Lies and play these games and have a blast. And what's happening at the HQ? 
I am packing. I am preparing for my for my trip for to America. I have a big suitcase. Now I'm bringing some samples. I'm bringing the games that are not yet announced. Uh, so some top secret projects that I will having uh, with me. Mm. I'm bringing uh, lots of interesting stuff. So check out and be sure to meet me at the Dice Tower Con because I will have uh, amazing, amazing titles, top secret titles to share with you. And uh, one last thing. Right after the Dice Tower Con, uh, that is uh, Monday. What's the date? But it'll be Monday. That will be Monday 11th. the 11th. 11th. Yes. Monday the 11th. I will be uh, visiting the Common Ground Games in Dallas. And on Tuesday after the Dice Tower Con, on uh, July 12th, I will be visiting Madness Games and Comics in Plano. Uh, so as I told you guys in the previous episodes, I'm doing this little tour around America, around this part of the America, They're meeting with fans, hanging out with them, and presenting these new games. So if you're in Dallas, if you're in Plano, and if you have time on Monday and Tuesday after the Dice Tower Con, you can meet me, have fun, take some selfies, take some uh, signatures, autographs on your, on your games, and see these top secret things that I'm going to bring to America. So a little uh, Rockman Ignace tour uh, starting <laughs> at the Dice Tower Con. <laughs> the, the rock star Ignace Chevichek I tour. I think there is, I'm so, so opposite, opposite to the rock star, but still I'm doing my tour. <laughs> when are you flying out of Orlando to Dallas? On Monday? On Sunday. On Sunday on Sunday evening, I have a late flight to Dallas. And then on Monday, I'm in Dallas. On Tuesday, I'm in Dallas, meeting with fans in Dallas. And then I'm uh, heading to Atlanta. Are you going to be able to check out the Kennedy Space Center? You mentioned you were uh, going to try. This is, this is my plan on Sunday. So on Sunday, when there oh. is a, a, this end of the convention, there is a time to uh, close the booth. I'm uh, heading to Kennedy uh, Space Center. And then after the Kennedy Space Center, I go directly to the airport and fly. You better hurry. It's a lot of stuff to see there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so over at the Podfather Gaming, I'm gonna um, I want to keep it brief, but I'm gonna again mention um, Podfather the Cruise, and I, I'm challenging you all to just go over to Facebook and uh, sign join the Podfather of Gaming group on Facebook. We have 1,500 members already. It's fantastic, and in there, of course. There's an event. It's pinned right at the top, a featured thing. You see it. And it's the cruise that I'm going to run January 7th through 15th, 2023, eight nights going all the way to South America. It's a bucket list item. You'll be able to get to South America for probably everybody because I've never been to South America yet. Very cool. And all net proceeds go to charity. And that's Ukraine Relief to be specific that matters to you. So I'm very excited about doing this. It's going to be small. We're not going to be bringing 2,000 games in a library. We'll be bringing games. You'll be bringing games. We'll share games. We'll play games. But the basic premise here is the social, warm, inclusive environment that we'll make. I'll be able to talk to everybody. I'll be able to game with everybody. Again, my goal is like 20 cabins. That'll be great. We're almost there. We're in like 15 or something like that. Pretty cool. Very excited about this. Hoping that that you some of you out there can join us. I think it's going to be a fantastic thing. So go over, join the Podfather of Gaming group, and check out the featured event right there at the top, Podfather the Cruise. Other than that, it's been a quiet couple of weeks before the craziness of summer travel. So um, we I got back and from Origins and have done nothing of travel in truly of game related other than my online RPGs and the game here and there with Paula. Um, but what we committed with what we have decided to do, Paula and I, that we're going to do one local trip per week while we're doing, you know, nothing at the house. And what does that mean? We last week, we went to the Palm Beach Zoo. It's only 30 minutes away. We took the took the vet put down the top when drove over to the Palm Beach Zoo. It's a not the Bronx Zoo, which is like one of the largest in America. It's a nice sized, smallish zoo, half day trip. It was fantastic. We had a wonderful time there. This week, we're going to be going to this butterfly sanctuary thing. Butterfly World, I think it's called, something like that. Um, they've got hundreds of thousands of butterflies that you can that you can not only see, but they you're in the, the thing, the the domes with them. 
Very interesting. I've been to these many times. I've never seen a place this big dedicated to butterflies. And again, it's like a half hour or so away. So I, I can't wait to be doing that. It's going to be fun. You'll see me post and take some pictures the same way that I put pictures on my personal page uh, when I went to the Palm Beach Zoo. It was so much fun. The tiger was amazing. He was staring at me. I think he looked at me and said, oh, he's gained a little weight. Lunchtime. I have so many now funny pictures in my head visualizing the team working and these butterfly uh, <laughs> place trying to keep these butterflies in the zone like they don't run away stop you are here and these butterflies just trying to escape and they are stop stop don't moving you are part of this no it's a zone they can't they can't they can't <laughs> go anywhere they they're 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 in there and they're wonderful um so uh, as everyone knows, I, I co-hosted Origins TV, mentioning it again, but what I'm doing right now, I have, I have put up all of those videos of all of those interviews I did on the Podfather of Gaming YouTube channel. Uh, go there, check them out. They, pretty, they came out pretty darn good, I think. Um, I had a good time doing them. I think it shows, and, I've, and I did those interviews with some of the biggest names and some of the smallest names and both of those were just interesting to do so check out again the podfather gaming youtube channel and see all the interviews from my origins tv stuff traveling dice tower east remember bgi we're gonna have a meetup for everybody who's listening to this who's gonna be there saturday at noon right outside the main tower i'm gonna bring i'm gonna buy pizza sodas beer we're going to have the World Board Game Insider Crokinole Championship with Ignacy and me. And uh, I better start practicing because I haven't played since I think last time. I'm, we not, played. Pra I'm, not, I'm not practicing. So it may be like a super embarrassing match. Like we both will be just not, you know, not doing it right. Just and missing fun everything. Yeah, fun will be entertained. <laughs> um, we, I, so we go from there. I go from there to BGG at Sea. Just a few days later, I fly to Galveston, Texas. Uh, BGG at Sea is the next weekend, and we are going to the Western Caribbean. I can't wait to see everybody there. Love that cruise. Um, right from there, I fly to the World Board Gaming Championships, the WBC in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Hang out with my buddies for, for like seven days, and then from there, I fly to Gen Con, where we have another week there of gaming and new releases. And I get to have a, oh, I got this great news. I don't know if I mentioned it. Uh, Roberto DeMeglio has given me a, a VIP special uh, demonstration. We're going to play War of the Ring, the card game, his new release. He won't even have it there for sale, but he's promoting it there. It's going to be tremendous. I can't wait to play that. Of course, you know, you guys all know how much I love that. The, the, the board game, now he's doing the card game. And then I collapse and I take the month of August off and, and do my local trips again. <laughs> Going to be a lot of fun. It's a big, big summer of fun uh, here at the Podfather's Place. And in the meantime, let's get to the event deck. So the first one is a very interesting uh, piece of news. And it came out of Aries Games. Um, and... It was about that they will not no longer be shipping to Germany. Now, why is that? There's a new law implemented on July 1st. The government is implementing a new law called Verpack G. I don't know. I don't know if that's a pronunciation or just a bunch of it's Verpack with the letter G after that. Um, all inbound orders from an international market are affected by this, and you have to declare and package everything with recyclable, recycled materials. It's a very complicated law that essentially they have determined that they cannot, they cannot comply with. They would love to do it, but it would take them so much time to do this that a small company such as them can't do it. Ignacy, do you know about this law and, and are, is it going to affect you at all? And by the way, this is not Aries Games. I mean, I don't know. It says A-R-I-E-S Games and Miniatures. But this is not the same company that makes um, 
War of the Ring, no. is it? No, it the, is the, not. the Millennium Mamesh is Italian, it is called Ares. R A R A S. A-R-A-S. Right, not Ares, Ares. Um, do you know anything about this law? And is it going I to don't, I okay. don't know anything? Uh, this is my, my, my team handling, handling it, so hopefully they know it. Uh, I will double check uh, if they know about this. Uh, so mm-hmm. I know nothing about it. Uh, from my personal uh, experience when I was in Germany uh, this uh, last SN, I have to admit, and I mentioned this uh, when I was reporting from SN, that there were so many companies uh, uh, saying they are going green, they are going uh, eco, they are caring for the planet. And this is very important in Germany uh, right now, as far as I can tell. Um, and I think it is good. It is uh, very difficult for us, smaller companies, but uh, me as a human, me as a person says, uh, if we need to fix the whole mess we did on this planet, uh, we need to go like all in uh, and not to go for the shortcut. So uh, maybe it means the same for me. Maybe it means that Portal Games will have a problem shipping to Germany. Uh, I don't know, but I respect the fact that they don't, that, you know, don't take jokes. Like they said, we have to save the planet. We need to make a recycling a serious thing. Uh, this is the law. We are doing it right. So. Uh, it may be a serious problem for many publishers and many companies in all different uh, industries. Um, but I say we can fix the whole problem with the climate change only with like action. We, we need topic. action. We absolutely need action. I mean, this is this is it's based radical, on what I'm reading. But we need to be radical, in my opinion. Based on what I'm reading here, it's very hard to comply um, for for a small company. However, however, when when things like this happen, and, and they need to, and I think we all agree that we need to do things like this. Um, when things like this happen, other, call them industries, other things spring up that then assist companies to make this happen. So maybe a company like Aris Games or, or Portal or whatever shipping into Germany might have to go through another company that then ensures that you are in compliance with this law, which is a good law to help the planet. So we're going to have to see how this plays out and how the enforcement works and all that. Um, you, for, I, this I, time, for, for this time, maybe this is the first time that Ignacio will be uh, reporting back because I will, of course, uh, go with this through my logistic team and I will uh, um, let them investigate. So I will go yeah. more next week, most likely. Uh, so, yeah. And I mean, this this law goes into effect as of our recording. This law goes into effect in two days. By the time everyone hears it, it's already been in effect for six days. So where this podcast will drop on the 6th of July. Um, and in, and in, in related news, I guess you can say, since we're talking about the environment, the EU just yesterday committed to all cars, commercially available, retail, that kind of stuff. Uh, will be electric by 2035. All electric cars by 2035 to be sold, which is crazy fast uh, and amazing, right? I mean, so I think within a few years, two, three years, every manufacturer is going to be just like swinging their production over to, to electric. I mean, GM has already said also that GM, General Motors, largest, I think, in the world, uh, automotive manufacturer, they're swinging their entire line over by 20, by 2035 as well. I think that was the date. I'm, again, don't, don't quote me. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But it's amazing that these things are happening. It's great that they're happening. We're going to have to do all kinds of work to make these things happen, including improving the, 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 the electrical grid and stuff like that to be able to put out more energy. It's, it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work. And by the way, I want to thank my good friend Marion McBride. Who, um, who runs the events at Gen Con, who gave me that piece of news. Otherwise, I would never have seen this Verpak G law going into effect in, uh, in Germany. Thank you, Marion. Now, the next piece of news is literally breaking this morning. Literally, Ignacy and I just got this from our good friend, Eric Hanwiz of Flatlined Games. He's like one of our investigative reporters out there. He's constantly sending news to us. And this one has to do with a cosmic shift in, in a major game line, and this is not Asmodee buying a game line. This is Asmodee selling a game line. So let me read this, because it's I was blown away when I saw that. Christian T. Peterson, 
who was the designer of Twilight Imperium back in the day, the owner, founder, president, CEO of Fantasy Flight Games until they were acquired by Asmodee, and then he retired. Christian Peterson's company is acquiring Keyforge. Richard Garfield Design will be paired with new software. So Ghost Galaxy Incorporated, a new company owned by Fantasy Flight Games founder, Christian Peterson's venture vehicle, Strange Stars LLC. There's a lot of names in there. Strange Stars is his parent, is his um is his gaming company. And now Ghost Galaxy Ghost is, I, I believe, a subsidiary of Strange Stars. They've acquired the intellectual property and card game rights to Keyforge from Fantasy Flight slash Asmodee, Asmodee, the company announced. Keyforge, introduced in 2018 and designed by Richard Garfield, was a card game sold in a format in which each deck was unique. Production problems prevented any releases since the fifth set released in early 2021. We reported on this that they could no longer make the decks due to an issue with the software engine. The announcement of the acquisition described those problems as production hurdles involving the custom deck generation software. Ghost Galaxy has built a team containing several um, involving, I'm sorry, uh, containing several of the principles behind the original release of Keyforge and has been working on what Peterson described as a next generation software engine for creating procedurally generated card games. We intend to have news for Keyforge fans within a few weeks regarding the future plans for the, the game Ghost Galaxy promised. This is the third acquisition of former Fantasy Flight Games assets by Peterson Companies. He acquired the print on demand business of Asmodee North America in October 2019, which was the company that was producing um, all of the Keyforge decks and operates it under the name Art Artiforge and brought the, bought the old Fantasy Flight Game Center, now operated as Games Center, uh, last year. Um, so, A, Keyforge is back. And that's a huge thing because that game was tremendously big and they have not been able to produce a single deck since early 2021, which was devastating, obviously. I mean, that must, must have generated untold millions of dollars for Asmodee, and then went to zero like that. Now it's coming back. I have a feeling it's going to come back bigger and better than ever um, because now one smallish company will focus on this. I'm excited about this. I was never a Keyforge player. I've seen the game played, but the concept of this and the and and how unique this was in gaming was always an amazing, intriguing thing, and what you can potentially do with this technology. Yeah, this is the, the we have on today not many news, but uh, this one is like a huge one I, indeed. Uh, so many things to discuss and unpack here. First of all, as you said, uh, Keyforge was super big product for Asmodee and uh, I, I talked with uh, some high level person from Asmodee here in Europe uh, back then and, and they, they told me that this is really like a powerhouse, powerhouse uh, for, uh, for Asmodee. So as you just said, uh, when the game disappeared, it was like a really big blow uh, for Asmodee because this game exploded a much bigger than they expected at the very beginning when they were starting with Kifo. So this is yep. one thing. The other thing is uh, for the first time we are discussing in this podcast, we should have a special jingle for that. Uh, we are for the first time we are discussing that Asmodee is selling the IP, that Asmodee is uh, removing from the catalog uh, a game or the line of the games. And we can read it in many, many different ways. I read it and I may be wrong. As we always say this podcast, we just share our opinion based on our experience. And so I may be wrong, but I would read it like they are curating the catalog. And uh, for them, maybe Keyforge was not basically the part of these family-oriented games, like bringing these getaway games. And on one hand, they have this cut and ticket to ride. This is the, and the fan base for Asmodee. And running the tournaments, you know, and the whole scene for the Keyforge is like a almost completely different business model. And uh, so I'm reading that even though Keyforge was bringing them so much money, they said, no, no, we are focusing on the mass market. We are focusing on these uh, best-selling games and Keyforge is uh, a completely different uh, 
uh, genre of the games. And we remember that they were uh, cutting uh, in uh, past years all the LCGs from the uh, from FFG. The, all the LCGs were just killed off, killed off, killed off. Uh, and now they are not killing keepers, but they are selling out uh, the keepers. So this is how I read this uh, news. And the last part of the of, of the news, the, the funny, the silly one, is that Christian uh, Peterson he went retired, and then he said, "Oh, you know, <laughs> it's boring." And he decided to get back to the business. And this is funny because we have this pattern here. Uh, two weeks ago, we were reporting that the former Repos owner started a new company. After he sold repos to Asmodee, so we see these uh, these people who were selling the companies to Asmodee, and apparently it is boring when you are retired and they are getting back to the business in new form. So all our listeners are now waiting for the news when Steven Bonacor buys Terraforming Mars back. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. Not but happening. you see the trend. Yeah, the, the, all these big names are somehow coming back to the in this new way in more in the indie versions, like indie publishers, indie companies, but. The, Apparently, they are bored on retirement. People don't know how to retire, Ignacy. <laughs> I, am, I am the poster child. I am the archetype. I am, the, I am that picture that you see in the dictionary next to the word retirement. Oh, if, if, Christian, if Christian hung out more with you, the, the, he would not buy Kifor's back. You say that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have. Yeah, I mean, we had lunch at uh, at Gen Con last year. It was great. Um, and you know, I was just saying, dude. I mean, he's much younger than me. So I mean, he's solidly ten years younger than me, at least. Um, okay, it might be more. I don't. I got. I don't remember. But you know, it's when you're that young, like like you, you're you're too young really to retire. You. You, you need more years of doing things. So that's why you get into something else. I. I am retirement age, you know, some people at least do it at this age. So I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And I manage my investments now, right? All that stuff I can now look at like, oh, where do I want to do this? I place this money and of course do all my retra- traveling and stuff like that. So that's so Can you I confirm do. that performing mass stays with Indie Boss and Cars? We can have this confirmation? I, to my knowledge, <laughs> to my absolute knowledge, I will tell you with 100% certainty, my, to my knowledge, I, I don't talk to Travis about this every week, that uh, the Terraforming Mars is, uh, is contractually ingrained with indie game studios. Yes, it's Stronghold Games. And with that funniness, let's get to strategy and tactics. All right, Peter Haroldson, he's at Pops. On BGG, he says, recently there's been a few flammable discussions in the hobby regarding designers and social media. I'm not even going to me- mention the names. Just the other day, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I should mention the names. Just the other day, another major designer go for said, it. said, go for it. Just the other day, Bruno Fiduti, this was obviously a year ago, um, said, people who don't drink can't be trusted and went to such lengths as to write control freaks, crooks, greedy people, and all those who wanted, wanted, who are wanted by the police never drink. Since you're publishing a game for him, Ignacy, oh my God, how does that make you feel? <laughs> I don't know if we should have taken this question. Are you too sensitive to things just said in jest on social media, or do you consider this to be a serious problem that is surfacing our industry? How important to you as a publisher to take a stand on these questions? Now, see, if you don't want to deal with this, don't worry. I will have, <laughs> we'll no, no, have I'm it fine. cut out. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. So All right. uh, this is a really complex, complex and it is very wide, complex. wide, 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 uh, wide problem that this uh, publisher signs a game with the uh, designer. Uh, he wants his game to be successful. But a designer, besides being a brilliant, uh, a brilliant uh, genius, he is a human person. And all the human persons have uh, political views, has religion views, has different opinions on different topics. And in today's world, when we all use social media, uh, these designers, in their free time, they share their opinion. And uh, with so many great designers from so many different cultures, from so many different uh, countries, uh, these opinions sometimes may be shocking for different cultures. And uh, indeed, you as a publisher, sometimes may learn that the designer that you are publishing just said something very controversial on the social media and you have now a situation that is called panic attack 
and uh, <laughs> and it it happened. There's a couple of of people here mentioned, but there was like, as you remember, Daniel Tascini. There was a huge thing when he said something inappropriate. Uh, there was Bruno Faiduti who said something inappropriate. Hey, I am sometimes saying something inappropriate on my personal Facebook page. Um, I was even uh, uh, Facebook even suspended my account once when I said something super super um, unpopular, and I was uh, reported to the to the Facebook. So yes, uh, we as the publishers have to understand that there is a designer and his job is to provide a great game. And then he's a human being, and we don't know who he is. Like we don't eat the dinner with him. Like we just, he, you know, he submitted the board game, we signed the contract, but we don't know him personally in many cases. So I don't know how fans can see it. I, as a as a publisher, must understand that, that I don't know political views of all designers I signed. Right. I don't know the religion. Like I don't know them as a person. Yes, I just signed a great game. Uh, so. I don't know if there is uh, any solution for that. We cannot, as the publishers, tell designers, please don't talk publicly. Right. Uh, I don't know if we should destroy the whole print run of the game because designers said something stupid. Like we need, I think, to distinguish these two right. things. But it is complex. It's a complex issue, and I'm going to give my opinions too. First of all, the first part is shut the f up. <laughs> so people, people need to control the, what what they say. You know. We have most most of the Western world freedom of speech, but you know you just you, you can control yourself and your emotions out there. You, you you don't have to say anything that comes to mind. In this case, we're talking about Bruno, and he's a he's a really nice guy. He made what I have used. I've used this as a joke. It's a, it's a statement that people say as a joke that like oh I can't trust people who don't drink. That's always said in jest. However, when he said it, people took him to task and he doubled down. He tripled down. He quite I'm like, if all he would have done was like, ah, oh, listen, all right, it was a joke. What I really mean is like, you know, this. But he went and he went and he went and he tried to prove his point and stuff like that. I think that you have to temper the things you say because you're also a professional, right? You're a human being. You've got opinions, but you're a professional. If you want to be treated as a professional, and if you don't want to be just destroyed, your reputation to be destroyed, calm down. Relax. Indeed, indeed, Apologize. Uh, In the end, he did. I think he like said something, but it was like took him forever. I think that, that, that you are saying is that the designer is sort of the public person because his name is on the on the cover. Yeah. So he should act a little bit different than other like if if somebody is just a clerk, some a worker in an office and uh, he can do whatever he, he wants maybe. If you are a publisher your name is on the box, there is some gravity with your name. Yeah, you, you yes, I mean people who have who have the ability to to hurt or you know, do do a bad thing or to to make people feel bad, I guess, is really what we're talking about here about something. You know, just watch how you say it. And if you go over a line, you can back up and say, listen, OK, I didn't I apologize. And then people should accept apologies unless people are saying things that are really horrible. But you can, you know, back up, relax, chill out. Don't take every every little thought in your head and split splay it out there because you can be you can hurt as well as help so careful designers and publishers and people out there Dejan tusser who's at the tusser he says hello when publishing a new game what are your criteria for the box cover do you consider other things besides the theme of the game do you try to go with a color scheme that would stand out on a shelf do you personally prefer colorful covers or clean ones? For example, like Time Stories. Keep up with the good work on the podcast. We all know that Tom Vassell was wrong. Tom Wassell, he wrote. I wonder if that was on purpose. Um, so, Ignacy, box covers are maybe one of the most, you know, interesting design choices that you make, uh, marketing cover, choice. Box cover is a lie. Box uh, cover let, is a lie. Is a lie. Mm. And let, me, let me explain. I wrote a thing about it a couple of years Really? Ago. Yeah. Mm. So when you wander, wander around the Gen Con halls from one booth to another booth, and you're wondering what to buy, and you see this amazing game, and you say, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to buy it. The only thing that you know about this game is the cover that is stunning. 
And let me tell you, the artist who was doing this, this art piece probably never played the prototype. Most likely he never even played board games. He was just, we need this art, it's amazing. You are the amazing artist, uh, draw us amazing orcs, whatever. <laughs> and you are buying this game based on this amazing art piece that has nothing to do with the gameplay. So that's why I'm saying that this is a lie. Uh, for us, obviously, we are uh, looking for the artist. Then we are asking them uh, for uh, sketches. So we have uh, at least four different uh, concepts. Uh, and then based on the sketches, we pick the ones, one uh, or two sketches to move on to the next stage. And then we nail down to the final cover. It is always... Uh, here at Portal Games uh, voting. So we have a poll in a company be between all the employees and they are voting which cover is the best because with the art, there is no right or wrong. There's always a different opinion. So we just do a democratic uh, the sketch, the cover, the version that was getting most likes from our employees. We have these uh, 40 people in the company. We go for it, but it doesn't mean that it is the best art. It means that most people like this one, so we pick the, this one. But there is, a, with art piece, there is no rule like this. I have never, I have never heard it. That is a very uh, Google-ish uh, way of thinking, or Apple-ish, like, you know, well, probably Google does it, like, where yeah, they we, we, we call it the sprint. We call it the sprint, so we put all these different variants of the covers, and we say, hey, our employees, we have 24 hours, please give us which one you, you think would be the best in our game. And we have a vote, 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 votes, and then we pick uh, the one that got most votes. Uh, wow, I, I'm... I'm, I'm literally, I mean, this is, the, this is the biggest news that we've talked about on this show today, <laughs> that you In your actually, face, Christian Peterson. <laughs> boom, Christian Peterson, you got nothing on Ignacy Chevichek and Portal Games. They vote on their things. That is so, um, so socialist. I mean, no, 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 I'm kidding. I mean, it's, it's really amazing that you do that. Everybody and in the do company. You, do you think that in many companies, there's just one person who said that oh, they did that way? hundred percent. I mean. Interesting. It'll be, I, well, it, obviously. The bigger the but company, this is the, ad, the one person may like this ad, but then twenty people prefer like no, this is not good. Like I don't know. No, no, I think it's you know, honestly, I think it's amazing that you do that. But I, but I know that. I mean, I'm sure that in almost every other co company, that there might be like the marketing guy. People will look at it and say, "Oh, this well, one is the, the way we're going to Online, the world you have your your, your company's internal. You know, amazing uh, website, and you and you discuss with all the people. So have. Maybe you don't want to answer this, but have you ever overruled the majority? You you can. You're there, the boss. There, there were a couple of situations when uh, I say I don't like this cover, but I agree. And there was some situation when I said uh, veto, like I don't agree. But basically, but basically, I try to step back. So very rarely. But there was a situation in the history of the company when I said I'm playing a boss card because I'm investing money. It is uh, uh, my company. Yeah. But this is seriously so all the employees understand that this is very rare situation and it is like every couple of years it happens that's amazing that's, i really I'm, I'm amazed that you have that kind of that kind of uh trust in the in the company and in your people and you make them make that kind of decision i think that's great thank you for thank sharing you. that thank you marcus shepherd who's at marcus shepherd on bgg a lot of publishers support flgs's with early access Promo promos. What's the business reason for this support? I understand it more from an emotional level, but is there also a financial incentive? Well, Marcus, I mean, just a quick answer is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's everything. We, we want to support the local game stores. If we, can, if we can send them something, it helps them. And if it helps them, they promote our game, right? So this is the old the old and old american expression one hand washes the other and both hands wash the face because we all helping each other to get to the final goal of selling great games ignacy yes if, the, if there is a, a 12 releases uh, this one a week uh, and uh, this retailer has for one of these games has a special promo most likely this game the promo will be on his uh, shelf in the most prominent way because he will say hey by the way buy this game i have a promo for you and he will sell this game so this is a win-win situation uh, we support them and they support us. Uh, and this is part of the tradition in the industry that uh, the whole industry works like that. And in the online stores, fight with each other with the, going down the price, like uh, fighting with the price. Uh, local game stores uh, keep the, in most cases, keep the uh, price uh, on a steady level, but they have something added value in a different way uh, for the game. So that's why most of these uh, loyalty programs are for the local game stores. These all these promos, uh, 
or additional demo copy for the store. It is always here in Poland, for, for instance, for each portal against release here in Poland, each uh, retailer who has a, a physical uh, a store will get a demo copy so he can present the game for the customers. He can open the box and show the components. It is important for the uh, for the retailers to have such opportunity. Mm -hmm. Alex Singh, who's at Singh Alex on BGG, has, and I don't understand the question exactly, so I'm going to interpret it. He, he asks, how do you handle an underperforming game, either critically or commercially, with your personal love for that game? So I, I assume he's asking, so we've put out a game and the game is not doing well. Either the critics don't like it, the game, game reviewers, or commercially, it's not selling well. But we love the game, so what do we do in this situation? This is the hardest situation, definitely on the commercial side, right? It's not selling. Uh, when you print, when you print a full print run, you need to sell a good deal of those, or the game is a flop. Um, so, Ignacy, what are you? What are the? What are the ways that you will deal with games that are not performing to your like? Is a bunch of them. I have a few. You must have a few. Yeah, this is a this is a terrible situation. We as the publishers believe in every title that we are doing by investing money in printing the game. That means that you believe in this game strongly. Like none of us would ever invest money to print the game that we already know that sucks. We all believe in our games, and right. then stati statistically, ten percent or fifty percent of of your new releases will be a flop. This is like a, a brutal brutal through. Uh, for years, I was struggling. For years, uh, uh, I couldn't uh, agree for the clearance sale. I was struggling, and I was telling my sales team, "No, this game is amazing. You know, you will see. People will discover it." And people were not discovering it, and the game was stuck in the warehouse for months and years. And I was not agreeing for the clearance sale. And now, much, much older these days. I understand that the running business is, is running a business and at some point after a couple of months, if the game is not moving, it's time to kill it because you're paying for the warehousing and in our industry, warehousing is extremely expensive because these boxes take a lot of space. Uh, it always breaks my heart. I, As you guys know me, I am very personally involved in uh, all these games that we are doing. So when we have to kill a title, when we have to do a clearance sale, it really is a is a pain for me, and it bothers me. But this is the way the business works. Yep, you you have you have the the you know you go back to your distributors and say we're putting this on markdown. You go and you send games to conventions uh, during sponsorships and uh, and to, and extra extra games out to to game stores occasionally, and all of those things occasionally will spur sales too. Right, so you you try to do more promotion when you really think something is great. You're going to do more promotion on that game occasionally uh, by putting more ads up and things like that. So it is the single hardest thing to deal with, and the single single most critical thing to deal with. And there's no perfect answer for it. Pushing a pushing a dead game uh, is a really really tough thing to to swallow, but you need to do it. Ignacy, with that, we're going to move on to our play testing segment. So last week, I asked everybody, what TV streaming show that you have watched recently made you go, wow, that was amazing? Or if you can't really come up with a wow moment on a show, what TV or streaming show that you've watched recently do you highly recommend for other BGI listeners and watchers? Extra credit, of course, if it's a geeky show. So, Ignacy, what... um. What, what kind I, of answers did you like here? I, I picked two answers. The first answer is from Christian, and he said, Severance on Apple TV was great, ended up in a long ethical discussion with my wife about this weird fantasy scenario. So once again, it's the same pick I said uh, last week, right. Severance. So guys, check it out. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm doing a podcast here in Poland, and every month I'm doing my top 10 uh, best shows I saw, and Severance will be in the top. It was the best show I saw in the month of june and guys remember there was disney plus entering polish market so i saw a couple of shows on disney plus and still severance is the best show of the uh, past month for me so christian i agree with you a great choice and the other uh, answer that i picked is from my friend paul marchbanks 
And he said, Obi-Wan Kenobi was really awesome. I also have absolutely loved the what we do in the shadows. It's quickly climbing to one of my favorite comedy series along with Arrested Development. And I want to say that I didn't enjoy Obi-Wan Kenobi whatsoever. So I picked this answer to once again and said it very, very clearly. Guys, we all have different tastes. We all like different things. There is no bad things. There is no bad games, no bad books, no bad movies. It is all of us have different tastes. For Paul, Obi-Wan Kenobi was really awesome. For me, I didn't enjoy it whatsoever. Really? And that's fine. And that's fine. That's interesting that you did not like it. I certainly liked it. It had issues. Um, I know. really, I really, really uh, didn't like it. Like, uh, really didn't like it. I guess we can go uh, deep on that at some point, yeah, but, but not today. But just, <laughs> just to stress it out, I don't say it's a bad, bad TV show. I'm just saying we all have different tastes. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I mean, like Paula did not really like it. I liked it more than she did. She kept giving me the. They, they rewrote this part of history. Anyway, so we can go we can go on that one so long. But there's a few here that, um, and I was trying to look for like new things because I wanted to see things that I, you know, new things for me because a lot of the stuff that people put out there were things that I've already seen. Peter Tierney, uh, he says that Invincible on Amazon Prime, a dark superhero animated series, by the way. Yeah, highly recommend that. Peacemaker, HBO Max, um, another superhero but crazy, the guy's crazy. He's played by John Senna, and he was in the Suicide Squad, the second one that was made. I, I would also recommend that. And Arcane on next, Arcane Netflix. Arcane is amazing. Yep. I did not see this. And he says, just, just watch this. So yep. I got to add, in fact, I'm writing that down. I'm Arcane, Arcane, Ar Arcane Netflix. I got I to gotta check that one out. Um, Marco Dobronic says The Expanse. And yeah, I mean, dude. I can't, I can't talk about The Expanse enough. Um, it's multi-season. Uh, they just came out with the final season. Well, just, this is eight months, six months ago. I don't remember. So good. Oh, one of the best science fiction shows ever done. Highly recommend that one. Gritty, gritty. Um, and I saw another one here and I can't find it. What it was, it was so interesting to me. And now I the can't boys, find it. The boys, guys, you need to watch The boys. <sighs> You know, it's amazing. The boys are amazing, but I literally have to. Now they came out the, the latest season. Um, this again is ultra dark superhero, really gory to the point of gross. I'm watching the. I just started watching the the, the la last season, the current season. The Paula is like, I'm not watching this. She's just done. She can't watch it because the amount of blood and gore. It's this is the boys are what superheroes would be if they really existed because people suck, <laughs> you know, because if people had superpower, they would abuse it on every level. Right. Now, let's face it. Right. The fantasy of of the Boy Scout of like Superman being so wonderful, even the dark Batman. Right. You know, but he's still a great person. If, if superheroes existed, the boys would be what they would be like, sadly. Sadly, because of human nature. So anyway, these are great. Um, thank you, everybody, for your, your comments. And Arcane will be one of the, the next ones that I check out. And Ignacy, what do we have? Your, your um, new question for the week. Yeah, what is we have, it? We have a very interesting uh, discussion here in the office. And I wanted to share it with you and ask you for the opinion. Uh, our listeners, uh, we were just at the convention. Uh, we are running demos of our new release. And what we notice is that uh, some of the customers uh, were playing the game and buying the game. And some of the customers were playing the game and uh, going uh, from the booth. But both of these groups enjoyed the game a lot. Uh, but some of them decided to buy the game and some of them decided we are not buying the game. And my question is uh, for you, based on these uh, very interesting experiences, that if you are coming to the show and you are taking demos of different games, to learn of these games and to decide if you want to buy them. So we are, we are taking a, literally a demo to decide if you want to purchase the game, or if you are using this demo as a part of the experience of the conventions and you're visiting many different booths, uh, playing these demos, but you never wanted to buy the game. You just wanted to be entertained during the convention. Uh, so these two different approaches, 
uh, for us publishers, we prefer when you buy the game after running a demo. Uh, but as you, you bought a ticket, you bought a badge for the convention and you want to have your money spent well and get entertained. So you taking a demo is just enough, right? So I wanted to ask uh, our listeners, the wider audience, what is your approach? You are going to the demos to decide if you want to buy the game or just to be entertained? So for me, um, generally these days, it's about the entertainment uh, at the convention. I will admit that. I go um, and like, oh, this looks good, entertainment. But then half the times I end up buying the game anyway. <laughs> because yeah. I was like, wow, this is really slick. I like the way this is. And the, usually the, the, the demos that you gave, the rules knowledge of the people, especially if they've been doing it like all weekend, they're really good. So they're really good at explaining the game. And when they're engaging and when they're really into explaining the game, then it makes a great experience for you as well. So always have good demoers, publishers in your booth. It really helps that sales factor in the end. So, so it's, it's, you know, a little bit of both for me, but my, my initial thing is I'm going for, let me get some, let me get some fun, enjoy that experience. But I often then end up buying it because I end up loving the games. <laughs> What, what is your, I mean, you don't, you don't take too many demos yourself, of course, because you're working booths, but what would your basic premise be in this situation? Uh, but I would, uh, yes, I have, uh, uh, because I'm a publisher, so my thinking is uh, different uh, probably. So yes, uh, when I sit for the demo, I sit checking the game to consider buying. So I respect the demo. I respect the publisher booth. And when I'm sitting, that means that I'm almost buying the game, but I want to check if this is really for me. So I would never just sit, okay, entertain me and I'm uh, going out. So this would be not, not an approach, but I'm a publisher and I know all right. the effort the publisher has to do to be at the convention, to have this yeah. demo, to have this game. So sure. I'm not the average customer, that is for sure. Sure, I mean, and, and myself as well, right? Not the average customer. Uh, and, and, and I will also be talking about any games that I play too, and almost always in a favorable manner. I'm never going to yeah. trash somebody's new game. I, I don't. I don't review games per se, but like on this show or when I'm talking to people, I have a bit of a voice out there. So therefore I talk about it and they will hopefully get some more publicity from that. <laughs> so we now want to ask everybody out there, <clears throat> why do you take demos? Entertainment or because you're going to buy the game? Ignacy is creating a thread right now uh, in our guild on Board Game Geek for you to answer our question to you. So please go to our guild on BGG, find our play testing thread for this question and post your answer to it. In the meantime, 40. what's that? 240 episodes, right? 240. <laughs> yes, 240. In the meantime, let's get to final scoring. Thank you so much for listening. Help us spread the word about this podcast by telling your friends to download Board Games Insider wherever they like to get their podcasts or now watch Board Games Insider on the Pod Father of Gaming YouTube channel. To ask us questions for our strategy and tactics segment, you must post them in the correct thread in our guild on Board Game Geek. To answer our question to you from our playtesting segment, also go to our guild on Board Game Geek and look for the thread with this episode's question. Board Games Insider has a Facebook page, so please like us on Facebook. Also on Facebook, please like Ignacy's page and Steven's page, slash Portal Games US and slash Podfather Gaming. The websites are portalgamesus.com and podfathergaming.com. Go there, sign up for the newsletters and get up to the minute information on what's happening at Portal Games and with the Podfather on social media. You can speak directly to Ignacy and Steven on Twitter and Instagram at Portal Games US and at Podfather Gaming. On YouTube, the channel names are Portal Games Movies, Portal Games Gameplays, and The Podfather of Gaming, TikTok, Portal Games US. We hope to see you at an upcoming convention soon in 2022. Dice Tower East, both be there. Come, hang out, have some beer, pizza, soda, water, and watch us make fun of ourselves playing Crokinole. Board Games Insiders professionally edited by Matthew Jude from This Game is Broken Podcast. If you'd like him to edit your podcast, please contact him on Twitter or email at thisgameisbrokenpodcast at gmail.com. And that great voice you hear doing our intro, outro, and in-between segments is that of Ray Greenlee. He can be contacted to do voiceover work at raygreenleevoiceover.com. Anything you want to talk about, Ignacy, besides our meetup on Saturday? So it'll meetup be is the most important right now. <laughs> it is. We really hope to, that, that at least some of you who are listening to this will be uh, at Dice Tower East. It is a great, great convention. And if you're there Saturday noon, right outside the main tower, um, 
beer, pizza, soda, crokinole, hanging out for an hour and just just having a good time with all of you people. That'll be a lot of fun to do. In the meantime, hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.